what you were talking about earlier, you know, just this sort of opening up to something that uh, we don't understand, and I see so many parallels in that with traveling. Oh, to absolutely. Yeah. So totally. I think that's a real reference point is that, um, have you traveled? I have, and I, I mean, those are some of my, you know, favorite uh, chapters in my life have been when I'm traveling. Yeah. Uh, it does allow you to sort of... My experience when I travel is that my eyes are open a little bit wider than they typically are, and you just sort of look at things a bit differently. Um, and, and I love that possibility in art, you know, that that allows you to look at something a little bit with fresh eyes. Uh, because it's unfamiliar, you know, yeah. and fresh. You're able to look at something fresh. Like I got spent a summer in Greece and came back with all these pictures of like rocks and squirrels, you know, <laughs> like these Greek squirrels. <laughs> it's ridiculous. People were like, "Oh, great, <laughs> great slideshow." Um, yeah. Um, there's a wonderful. Uh, this is related. Uh, biography of this uh, visual artist, uh, Robert Irwin. Do you know Robert Irwin? No, the name. Uh, but the, the title of the biography is uh, Seeing is uh, Forgetting the Name of the Thing One Sees, which I think is a really profound and beautiful uh, idea and something that I'm very interested in the work that we present. Um, that it, it's, it, I think it takes actually a long time to learn how to just look at something uh, simply, um, we bring so much baggage to things that, and, and lay so much baggage on things uh, uh, that it's it's hard to just simply look at something. Um, and when you can, it, it, it's like wow. So um, learning how to do that is is, is a, takes practice and some some care, but it's a it's a wonderful aspiration I think and a powerful one and something that I think art can really do allow us to kind of look at something as if we've never seen that thing before, even though we've seen it a million times, you know. Well, to be present with the thing as it is. Yes, yes. Without overlaying every previous experience totally, with something totally. similar. What would you like to see happen with Fusebox ultimately? As the festival, I'd love to continue to do more sort of commissioning or residency programs where we can provide artists spaces and resources to, to actually create work. I like that the festival is not just about presenting work, but it's actually an incubator. It's that Austin becomes a place where uh, really interesting new work is being built. And hopefully there's uh, space in those sorts of residencies for local artists to either participate and be involved in these projects. So there's some exchange that way as well. Um, we have some new initiatives that we were just sort of starting this year that I was really excited about. We had a, a food and art series that was really fun. Um, we have, we're starting to, to work on this technology and art uh, project, which I'm very excited about. I just feel like technology is, it's, you can't ignore it. Um, and and uh, so it seems essential that we sort of deal with it in some way. And I do think it's, it's a, we love pairing different in individuals from different backgrounds together to work on projects. And so yeah. we've been talking about creating some sort of series where we pair someone that's working in the technology field with an artist working in a different field. That's it for this episode of Tantric Traveler. If you like these videos, please be sure to share them with your friends. And don't forget to sign up to our mailing list. I'm John Prophet. Thanks for watching Artspace. Space.